Hello, everyone. Welcome to CR Wrestling Commentary. I'm your host, Eddie Kennedy. This is the viewer requested one, and it's thoughts on if the headbutt should be banned from wrestling. I would have put pro wrestling, but I didn't feel like sh shrinking the text and trying to fit it on screen. So, hey, that's why. <laughs> for those that would even have to, for those that would stare at their screen and whatnot. Um, and this was requested by Zimmo Times 2, who I don't think he's being, how can I say, a sense of forward manipulating uh, or be trying to be manipulative, but it, it's one of those, you're on my side, right? That's how it comes across. And I don't think he means it that way. I just think he's in the spirit of the moment because Zemo times two, he, he come, comes across as a person that cares, a person that, you know, doesn't want to see someone needlessly get hurt. So I'm just saying that so if anyone out there sees this and is like, I think he's trying this, I've had enough conversation with Zemo to know he's, I don't, I don't think he's just a mean person. I don't think he's somebody that's going to try to control somebody. You know, I just think the absolute opposite. I think he cares a lot. So, and, and, and it comes with a quote, I'm going to throw it up on the screen. You know, it, it's, it's for him and it says, I hope you make a video on headbutts and why they should be banned. Because a line like that, it will most likely make others say, oh, well, if I'm not immediately on your side, then you're sure enough going to leave me alone or something like that. And then it makes them want to be political on it. I can't do that. I just I can't be so political on most things. And I get it. But once you become political, you have become trapped. You're screwed. You're done. Once you become political, you have then you become the whooping post, all right? And that's just not going to be good for anybody, the controller, the controlly, anybody, okay? Um, but he, I, I am in agreement, but I'm also in disagreement. I am so, I am so on the fence of this, okay? So let's just jump right into it now that I've gotten that disclaimer and whatnot out the way. Um, I'll take that off screen because it doesn't need to be the forbearing of this because I don't think he's coming from a mean, malicious or controlling place at all. That's just, I don't, I don't think so. And I will not believe so. You know, he's got to prove it to me that he is. Okay. So the headbutt. Yes. I know who innovated it. Uh, the, the diving anyway, but as in the regular headbutt, I don't know who, I don't know who innovated just regular headbutt. So, um, should it be banned from wrestling? Okay, so let's jump into the meat of it. The headbutt in pro wrestling is most seen as the diving headbutt. I have seen Chris Benoit jump from the top, land on Eddie Guerrero, both knock themselves out. Well, no, Benoit knocking them both out. And it was just for a few months. They just laid there. Nobody did anything for about three seconds. And that's a long time in pro wrestling. Eddie slowly started moving. Benoit kind of started getting up, shaking his head a little bit, crawled on top, got the one, two, three. No, 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 no. He didn't get the three. He, no, Eddie threw the shoulder up. And the look on his face was kind of like, huh? And... That leads credence to Jim Ross's year, uh, uh, commentary years before talking about kicking out on instinct more than anything else. And I know he's trying to liven up the match, but then you got this to sort of confirmation bias what he said, which makes the viewer, ergo myself and others that remember it and then see this between Eddie and uh, Benoit, well, Eddie and Chris be like, oh, man, you know, it leads le legitimacy to the sport. You also have when... Um, Toru Yano decided to play little games with Tenzan Hiroshi and squared him with the water. And the whole match, Yano knew not to be Tenzan at that time. Was like, you know not to mess with him at any time, really. And when it came time for the match finish, Tenzan delivered a diving headbutt, which split both of them open, severely damaged their orbital bone and um, optical areas. To the point where Tenzan's eye was shut, Yano's, it was just so black and purple and bluish and swollen. And you could tell they did a lot of work to make it look as, well, 
as little ugly as possible. Okay. There's the standing headbutt where you uh, there on the indie scene, a wrestler trying this as seen in New Japan, slammed his head against somebody else's uh, face, broke their cheekbone. Okay, remember it, 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 it broke the cheekbone, um, and then you've got the more famous standing headbutt, which is Shibata and Okada, where. Shibata, who was already hard of seeing, delivered a bone-on-bone -bone head, but not being able to see the absolute correct distance and slam his head into Okada's. Where Okada has suffered a very mild concussion, Shibata not only worsened his ailment, his already ailment, but caused himself, you know, a, a, a hematoma. And worse, I can't remember everything that was into it, but almost killed himself. Pretty much killed his career. Well, New Japan was going to do that anyway. They wouldn't use the dude right anyway. But these, this, this, this is why people like Zemo and that points myself. It's like, why did they even allow them to do this move? Okay. So here's the thing. The headbutt is almost considered like a gun. The gun is only used like the headbutt to do what? Cause damage. Nobody's going to go into the woods hunting any deer with a, a revolver. Hunters use long range type things, you know, like a, a long barrel shotgun and things like that, you know. That's what they use, although I would think a true good sportsman would use, you know, arrows and whatnot, you know, bring it back to before the hardened one hit or quitter projectiles. When it comes to the headbutt, it's all about the intent of the person wielding it. You've got a nasty person that's going to buy a gun. They're going to do something nasty with it. You got someone that says, I bought this gun to defend my family. I keep it locked up. I keep it where it is, and I'm not going to use it unless there is an actual break-in of some type. You know, okay, fine. Those are decent people. You got people that'll say, look, there's coyote and other things that come into the property. I'm trying to raise a farm and cattle, chickens or whatnot. I use the gun to not kill them, but shoot and then scare them off. Shoot it roughly up into the air to an extent, mainly out into this the woods or whatever it has and scare the, the, the animal off or shoot into the ground and scare the animal off. Okay, decent people, good people, no ill intentions to hurt any other animals or people. The headbutt is roughly the same way. It's all about who's wielding it to how much damage it's going to do. Currently, the headbutt is usually, I know this be a spoiler, but the headbutt is aimed towards more of the clavicle the clavicle and neck area, like a punch. So people that wield the headbutt in this manner, then they're the ones that are being safe. Now keep in mind the bone on bone headbutt is rare. The bone on bone headbutt was only used by people that knew what they were doing. It was only used by people that were highly trusted to bust somebody open using the headbutt to add legitimacy and brutality to a match. Not many people used it. Andre the Giant at one point used it. You know, uh, I think Giant Baba used it once or twice. The bone on bone headbutt means there's no protection. And that is something that they would never say in commentary. They would not say that. They just say it's a headbutt and then describe how brutal it was or yada, 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 yada. The bone on bone headbutt was very well placed. It was a split bloop, no concussion, no issues, no harm, no foul in a sense. It's how it's supposed to go. But then you get people that don't know how to use it. Or people that have an injury that can't, that doesn't have great spatial awareness. And then they use it. And that's when you get your injuries. That's when you people get hurt. The headbutt, when delivered to the clavicle or the neck, 
it protects both and the stomping on the mat adds to a sound effect that allows people to think that the thing was very brutal but in general the headbutt Andre the Giant used it the most that's when they put their, their hand on the uh, defender's head and headbutt, headbutt their thumb the first knuckle of their thumb leading from the back of the hand or sometimes if they have enough hair they headbutt the back of their hand and some don't even touch anything they'll hold their hand up there and headbutt roughly between the thumb and the index finger which is a space but they use the side of their head so that the head can't even touch the opponent but when they hit with that impact the opponent goes stumbling back and it's a little you know it's push it's a good strong stiff style push but no head butt no head connects it's all about who wields it to how dangerous it is and when you've got people that work in places like AEW and stuff like that, Attitude Era Wrestling and, you know, World Wrestling Entertainment, a lot of indie scenes and garbage wrestling scenes, and they want to use the headbutt without knowing how to properly do it, you're going to get tons of injuries. Tons of injuries. So hopefully, those wrestlers that hear this and others that want to be wrestlers that may hear this, hopefully you get trained by someone that can tell you how to do this properly. Don't just simply take it from me. Don't just hear me and say, oh, now he done told us some of the secrets. I know how to. No, never do that. Get trained by those that can properly, physically show you how to do these things. Be safe. Keep the person in the ring with you safe. That is the main objective, to be able to go home safely to your either home and or family within said home or group thereof where you dwell. That is the idea. Since people are not doing the headbutt properly and the headbutt has done some major damage, I don't blame Zemo times two for his comment. I know it seems a little pushy but I don't blame blame them at all it's you know people just don't they're, they're reckless they just want the pop of the crowd they aren't thinking too much for their own life they just ugh. man it's a disease out there on why these wrestlers are doing what they're doing it is and it's just not right they need to take a step back but the headbutt I don't think it should go anywhere I think it should stay in wrestling. I don't think it should be banned, but I don't think anyone that has not been fully trained in how to do it should ever do it or practice their way of doing it. You need to find out the proper way to do it and then train. Get perfect and then do it. That's the idea. Because if people can't listen and do the right thing then ultimately the headbutt should be banned and I would definitely be on that bandwagon this has been Cedric Kennedy for CR Wrestling Commentary thank you for listening <laughs>